Happy Camper Radio starts in three, two, one. one, one, one. It is the Happy Camper Radio Show, episode 122, and I am so glad to be back with you again. I'm Skip. I am a happy camper. And yes, my friends, we are going to make a happy camper out of you. Guess who's joining us in the studio today? Hello, Daniel. Hey, what's up? Hey, all right. How so, you uh, wh- wh- what are we using to make this uh, happy camper? Are we going to be like a, a camper Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein? We're going to make camper monsters? Daniel, I know it's electricity to to make campers. I know it's close to Halloween, (laughs) and I can understand why you're thinking Frankenstein. And uh, is that pirate ship going to go up in the front yard this year? Oh yeah, you didn't put it up there last year. What's the matter? I might, I might pull it out this year. That's that's a good idea. Your wife didn't set it up. No, I (laughs) I I thought you'd come over. Well, you know, I'm gonna come I get over you to take, do odd jobs all the time. I'm going to come over and take some pictures of it again because that thing is so neat. Yeah, it's you know, pretty and, cool. Hey, and Halloween is what? How many weeks away? About four weeks? Something like that. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, it's good to have you back here in the studio. I've yeah. Always, I've always told you that there is always a seat and a microphone here. Yeah. I thought I, got, come over. I thought I got replaced by the booth of justice. No, the booth of justice, uh, my sound booth you're referring to, of course. Uh huh. All right. Well, that took up a good corner piece of the studio. I know. And unfortunately, the the sofa in here had to go. Uh, yeah. So you know, it's it's kind of sad. I do miss the sofa. I passed it on to my daughter, and she's using it for something else right now. But mm-hmm. uh, the sound booth, definitely for my voiceover profession that I have, I'm in and out of the booth all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's where I spend a lot of it, a lot of time, in fact. Right. But, uh, you know, anyway, we're outside the booth right now in we the are. studio, and uh, we are here with the Happy Camper Radio Show. Mm-hmm. It's good to have you back in the studio. I know you've been a busy guy. You're I in, am a busy guy. You're into a lot of things. I am into all the things. Hey, I saw the, the video. Uh huh. I saw the video the other day. Uh, you and your wife were doing a sock hop somewhere. Oh yeah, and yeah. you were you were picking her up, and she had that nineteen uh, sixties dress on, and yep. you were spinning her around. Yep. All right, so you graduated from the tap dancing, and now you're doing. I the never deep. did tap dancing. You, I do ballroom dancing, and that was a uh, swing routine with Charleston and uh, Lindy and a little two step. Well, not two step, but a triple step. It was a little routine that we uh, performed for our class. We've been taking ballroom for over a year, and we take karate. And we skate on Sundays. Am I ever going to see that episode? Of what? What do you want to see? The, the, the one, the episode you just discussed. Or, or oh, karate? About. Yeah. Do you, well, have, you have any videos of that? No. Uh, I think there's a big ceremony when you get your black belt. We're halfway there, so I'm sure we'll do something. Well, make sure I don't upset you. I don't want to have anything to do with that at all. It might motivate me, actually. <laughs> anyway, good to have you back here, our listeners. Our phone number here at the Happy Camper Radio Show is 404-537-2267. That's 404-537-CAMP. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker. Add us to Circles on Google+, and now subscribe to our YouTube channel. So many ways you can connect up with us. Go to www.happycamperradio.com, and you'll find all of our social media icons over on the right-hand side of the page. Right now, I want to go to our shout-out window. We have quite a few folks here that uh, signed on to social media. Have you have you added a window, and you shout at it, and people, you, you I, play it, and people, people shout, at, shout at the window? Like, why aren't you clean? Why do birds run into you? Ah, is that is that the kind of comments you get oh, Daniel, from the shout out window? <laughs> That's all I can say. Anyway, we want to say hello to Brian Thompson, who likes us on Facebook. Maymag Museum of the Arts in Austria, Lookout Adventures, and Cape Lookout, North Carolina. Rug National Urban Park, Splash Rafting in the UK, RV Showrooms, they're all following us on Twitter. To Scottish Tour Motorhome Hire in Scotland, UK. Oleander Acres RV Resort in Mission, Texas. RVing Live the Dream. Alex Stewart of California. Claire Smith of London, England. They've added us to Circles on Google+. And finally, to Robert Blondette Reed, who is now subscribing to us on YouTube. Thank you, each and every one of you. Glad to have you aboard. 
It's always a pleasure to have new members as part of this great Happy Camper Radio family. Would you like to be on the program? I'd love to have you here. Give me a shout. Skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com. We'll make that happen. If you have something in the world of camping that you would like to talk about, definitely get in touch with us. So many different ways we can pull you into the console here. Uh, we have a new service called Source Connect, too, which uh, we're just now testing out. And I understand it's a very good program. If you have a headset and you're attached to a computer, uh, it's crystal clear quality. Wonderful. And of course, you know, we can always do the old-fashioned Ma Bell, connect this up by landline or cell phone or whatever the case may be. It all works out one way or the other. Daniel, on today's show, uh-huh. I want to talk about campfires and wildfires. They're crazy. They're out of control. Aren't they, though? Yes. Do you remember about a year ago, there was a fire in California, a wildfire. And I feel so sorry for those folks out there. I think there. that's every year. <laughs> It, it, may, it may very well be, but I know the past couple of years I've been following it real close. The one wildfire they had last year, and we did an episode on it, I think they named that the Colby Fire. Mm-hmm. And that fire uh, was started by some campers up in the mountains, and they were in a red flag area. And you know what a red flag area is. That yep. means that's one of those areas that, you know, because of drought conditions and very dry vegetation, you don't even light a match. Mm-hmm. It's, it's because, you know, fires are so dangerous and they can spread so rapidly. But uh, there were some guys camping up in the mountains, and I don't know if whether or not those guys were uh, aware of the red flag warning. But what ended up happening is they started a campfire, and somebody, if I remember correctly now, somebody balled up a piece of paper, lit it, and it took off in another direction, and it caught some brush on fire. And wow, from there, they just had a a big disaster. A lot of acreage burns, some houses burn, some personal property, some things that can't be replaced. But that was last year. And this fire that they have now, they called it the Valley Fire. And my heavens, so far, 105 square miles have been destroyed, nearly 600 homes destroyed, 23,000 people displaced. And one confirmed death. The good news is they're starting to get a handle on it. And this all started like last, I think it was last Saturday. And they have been just been added out there. I mean, I I think a lot about those folks. And, you know, I I like the idea of being able to go camping. Did you see some of the photographs of people on the news? You know, with with no place to go, a lot of them are, are setting up tent cities. Oh, really? I, I heard, you know, a couple of people talking on the news about, you know, how until you've experienced it, you have no idea what it's like to lose everything. Yeah. And and some people have lost everything. There are, are people there that have lost family heirlooms, some homes uh, that belong to their grandparents that are no longer there. And, you know, and some of the folks uh, were able to get their pets out. Some had to leave their pets behind. And I understand that they just recently allowed people to go and feed and water their pets and had to get back out. I couldn't imagine doing that. You know, to all the folks out there in California, you know, understand we're thinking about you here at the Happy Camper Radio Show, and we wish you the absolute best as you work to try to rebuild your lives. I know it's difficult, but, you know, there's a lot of folks thinking about you. You know, thank heavens for groups like the Red Cross and, and, um, FEMA, right, Skip? Yeah, you got, you got FEMA out there. And I, like here in, in Georgia, they have GEMA, which is the Georgia Emergency Management. I'm sure they have something similar in California. In fact, I know there are some firefighters from Georgia who are out there in California assisting. I think there's something like 1,400 firefighters working to get this fire under control. Hmm. But, uh, you know, that's uh, that's something, you know, you need to be very careful about. And that's what brings up this episode today. We're talking about campfires and wildfires on the show. And if you're not familiar with fire weather watch and red flag, red flag warnings, I'll get that out. Little tongue twister there, folks. Uh, go to NOAA.gov, N-O-A-A dot G-O-V for information and updates. It's one of those websites you want to keep in your favorites because there's a lot of useful information there, especially if you're planning a camping trip. I don't care where you're going. If you want to get a seven-day weather forecast, 
Go to NOAA.gov, and all you have to do is punch in a city and a state. Uh, you can put in a zip code, if I remember right, and uh, it'll, it'll pull the weather forecast up for you. And it also has areas where there are fire weather watch and red flag warnings. Now, a fire weather watch, uh, for those of you wondering what that's all about, uh, a weather watch is the potential for severe fire weather existing in the near future. It doesn't necessarily mean that, uh, you know, those existing uh, conditions are there. On the other hand, a red flag warning indicates the imminent danger of severe fire weather. And you'll be surprised in a lot of cases and a lot of areas, you cannot light fires, campfires, whether it be, you know, at a private or public campground, or if you're wilderness camping, and that's where you've got to be really, really careful. I always encourage people to do your research ahead of time. You know, if before you burn anything, definitely you want to call your state or local authorities to see if outdoor burning is permissible. Uh, information can be found online in so many cases. Daniel, what would you have done without the internet, say maybe 20 years ago? I don't, I don't know. I don't want to think about it. That's that's a very scary thought. You but. know, it, it would be kind of scary <laughs> to go backwards. I mean, especially for an old-fashioned guy like me who, you know, so much relies upon the internet today. Yeah. Especially for this show. Where would where would podcasting be? Where would Happy Camper Radio Show or any other of the shows that our listeners tune into? Where would they go if they didn't have the internet these days? Yep, it's it, a it's, gift from the gods. Yeah, it has done so much for us. <laughs> You know, but, you know, you can check with your campground host and local forest ranger wherever you go to find out if there are red flag warnings or if there if there are dry conditions or some sort of local condition that exists where you cannot light a campfire. I could not imagine what it would be like to go somewhere and camp out and be told you can't have a campfire. You can camp here. You can go do all the fun things and everything, but, you know, when it gets dark, hey, too bad, just light your battery-operated lanterns and sit around and sing songs. It wouldn't be the same. I think it's more of a Western problem. I mean, I know they've had, like, terrible droughts out there in, you know, California and everything, but, you know, I mean, that's that's a dry place. That's that's the way it's been. But, you know, out here, we, we really don't have to worry. And usually when you go to a campground, they'll, they'll let you know if you can burn or not. If they're selling firewood, you can burn, but, you know— it's just that that's the kind of atmosphere that they have over there. I went over to Utah, you know, last year and you couldn't turn around without seeing signs that tell you not to burn. They 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 let people know. So, I mean, you kind of have to be a big rebel or whatever to uh to start a fire like like, you know, these fires got started out there. But I think most people are, you know, responsible and everything. But, you know, it only takes one. And unfortunately, that one can do a lot of damage. Do you remember the drought that we faced here in Georgia about fell six to eight years ago? No, I loved it. It was yeah, great. I did not. I, uh, did not. I hate rain. <laughs> oh, no, I, I love rain, especially when it's <laughs> landing on your tent. And you've got, to, you've got to enjoy it, too. Come on, Daniel. You've got to admit that when you have your pop-up set up wherever it's at, and it's getting to be the early morning hours, and you hear that rain just pattering down on the roof of your your pop up. You can't tell me that you just don't want to roll out, roll around, and stick your head underneath that pillow and go right back to sleep. Well, it depends. It depends on what I want to do that day. If, if I'm not doing an outdoor activity, I'm like, oh boy, I better put on my rain jacket. But I, my my camper is my hotel. I mean, basically, I'll get up, I eat dinner, and then I'm out. I'm out to do whatever. I'm out to go wherever out to sea whatever i mean that's just how i roll i don't really hang out at the campground too much i mean there's there's places i've been to where they have a lot of uh amenities and stuff and pools and everything but i'm all about being out and about and go 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 never stop that that's okay it's just i'm, I'm the same way except my tent yeah that's my castle and my campsite is my my uh my backyard for the most part and that's where i hang out and I, I I totally understand. But, you know, getting back to the drought, I can remember that here in Georgia. Do you remember the watering ban? Wasn't yeah. that terrible? Well, they were acting like we weren't going to have water. They were, I think they were, they were going a little crazy with that. I, yeah, I think the authorities were going overboard because yeah. do you remember them telling you to, you know, 
call in, turn in your neighbor if you catch them watering the lawn or yeah. washing their car or doing this and that. Yeah, and people were ridiculous. going absolute nuts. Nah, and, be, and before you know it, I mean, the rain started moving in, and it was it was very delightful, and everybody enjoyed it, and the lake levels went up. And but you know that can happen just about anywhere. Yes, out west it is a serious problem, and we've been uh, hearing about the drought conditions long before this most recent wildfire took place. So you know, let, let's just hope the rain starts to move in, and these folks out there can can get their lives restored. But, you know, this is very important for each and every one of us to think about any time we go camping. If you go camping in the wilderness especially, this is where you have got to be extra careful and extra precautious because you are going to have more fallen foliage around you, more so than you would be having at the campground. So if you're camping and you you're very good about you know raking out your your spot that you're going to set your fire up at, you've got to also keep in mind that you've got a lot of area around you, and just like these folks uh, that were camping out there last year during that Colby fire, you know all it takes is one ember to get away or something to get away and catch some some down foliage on fire, and you've got a serious problem. So you've got to be on the lookout for those at, at all times, regardless of where you're, you're camping on. But I always encourage folks, you know, wherever you go camping, especially when you're monitoring situations like you have out in California right now, it's always a good idea to do your research ahead of time. Call your local forest ranger if you have any questions as to whether or not you can burn. I have always said, when in doubt, do not burn. But, you know, your campground host, your the campground owner, if you're going to a public or, a, I'm sorry, a, a private campground, you know, they'll definitely be able to tell you what the conditions are because they stay in tune and they're on top of those things. Again, our phone number here at the Happy Camper Radio Show is 404-537-2267. Get in touch with us anytime if you have a camping question or you can email me, skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com. Well, Daniel, where's your next vacation? Um, well, we're going out to uh, Vegas pretty soon. We're not going to camp, but, um, you know, we're going to go out there. I've never been out to Vegas, so we're going to see all the sites, do all the things, probably go out to the uh, Grand Canyon, Red Rock Canyon. There, There's so much out there that's just so gorgeous, and it's just awesome. I mean, when I went out to Utah last year, it was just so peaceful out in the desert. It, it's the most peaceful place I've ever been in my life, and I'm just really excited to be there. But um, about a month, uh, about three weeks ago, we went over to Myrtle Beach and everything, and that was really fun. I was fun. going to ask you about that, mm -hmm. your Myrtle Beach vaca vacation. And, you know, and it, it be, it's kind of difficult for our listeners to envision this. Even though you live right next to me, you and I live 20, 30 feet apart. Yeah. But at the same time, our work schedules are totally the opposite. Mm -hmm. I'm a moonlighter and you're a daylighter. I am. And so, you know, we cross paths and it's very difficult. You know, I understand for you to get in the studio sometimes when we're doing the show. But anyway, tell us what uh, what went on out there in Myrtle Beach. And the reason I ask you this question mm -hmm. is because when I first moved here long before I met you mm -hmm. and I got out of law enforcement for a number of reasons, I needed some time off and I took a short vacation over to Myrtle Beach. Didn't stay long, and I didn't camp. I just told on myself. But anyway. It's okay. Anyway, I know you went ahead and connected up your pop-up and oh, yeah. went on out there. Tell us things. Tell us a little bit about well, your trip. First, the first thing that I want to say is there's a, for all our uh, pop-up campers that listen to us, there's a thing called a ball leveler, and basically it is the greatest thing known to man. Well, as far as camping is concerned, it basically, it um, when you're trying to level your camper, it's one of the hardest things to do. And this thing, it, it acts as chalks and a stabilizer. It'll jack up your tire on the left or the right, whatever needs it. And it made our camper, uh, we, we, uh, we got our camper set up in the rain in about five minutes because of that thing. Because usually we got to, we got to crank it up. We got to, you know, level it and... With this thing on one side, it was the greatest thing ever. And yeah, I've never been able to find this thing at stores, but um, you can get it at Amazon. And, uh, you know, it, it's a dream. It's a dream. You, you still got that link on your website, Skip, to Amazon? 
I think I do. All right. Well, what if, you want to do? We'll, we'll put it on there. For yeah. What you want to do is go to the Happy Camper website and then link over to Amazon, and then uh, look for a ball leveler. It it is a dream. But anyway, so we got set up there, and you know, we went to the beach, and that was really nice. And I went swimming, and <laughs> my wife watched me from from the uh, uh, you know the chair. She doesn't really like to get out into the water. She's more of a uh, layout on the beach kind of person. But we went to, so we went to a Myrtle Beach State Park and, uh, you know, there was a lot of people there and we went around looking at all the different trailers and stuff. And, you know, the, no two trailers are alike. It's amazing how many different kinds of trailers and pop-ups and even tents there are. And there was this one trailer we went across it was a uh, it was a seventy five nomad no I think it was seventy eight nomad, and that that was the kind of uh, trailer that my parents had when we had a uh, a camp camp spot. Well, it was a it was a lot up in the mountains. It was kind of a permanent thing, and we had that trailer in the mountains. And so I I took a couple pictures of it, like the first couple times, all sneakily, and then one of the last times we went through there. The people were out there. I didn't see them at first. I was going to take a picture with my phone. And, uh, you know, they were walking to their camper. And I was like, uh, is this you? I'm like, yeah. I was like, my parents had a trailer just like this when I was a little kid. And he was telling me about how he fixed it up and how there's no rust and how it's it's just working awesome for him. And it was just really cool to see something from my childhood, you know, that someone used a trailer like that nowadays but you know we went uh we went to do uh touristy things we went to uh i'm a nerd so we went to this thing called magi quest and it's a it's kind of a scavenger hunt thing and with uh wizardry and you get a wand and it's it's way too much fun and uh we went to this thing at uh huntington beach it's called the analia house and it's this big old stone house that this really rich guy back in the 30s owned. And, you know, we went through that, and that was just amazing. And it had a big old courtyard. Um, his uh, wife was a, a sculptor, so she would bring all kinds of different animals, like lions and tigers and bears, and sculpt, like, real-life, you know, lions and tigers. And, you know, that was her thing, and he was in the finance and everything. But we took a little tour through their house, and it was it was, it was gorgeous. It was really gorgeous. And, you know, that was just like a weekend thing. And we had a really good time. And, uh, we plan on, uh, in, in later October, we plan on going down to the, uh, the, uh, hall of fame, the disc golf hall of fame down in Appling, Georgia. And, uh, I got a couple of our friends, uh, to go with us. So for the first time ever, we're going to go camping with other people, we're going to try to fit six people in our trailer. It holds six people, but we've never done that. It's always been me and my wife. So this time we're going to have two other couples sleeping in the same trailer with us. Uh, Deidre, my wife, keeps reassuring me that we're going to be outside a lot. We're not going to be inside the whole time because with six people, it's going to be really cramped. But it's it's going to be a lot of fun, and you know I can't wait to get out there. I'm... I'm almost more excited about that than going out to Vegas because it's just fun with people you like. And, you know, we, we've we've been to campgrounds all over the place, and we always see, like, groups of people, and we're like, wow, that'd be awesome to find, uh, you know, a camping couple to go with. And relationships like that are really special. It looks like they really have a bond. And th I don't think there's anything better than going camping with someone to bring people together. I mean, a couple of years ago, we went up to a cabin with other people, and that was a lot of fun. And it's just, it's just good to get away with your friends and stuff, and have fun and kick back and take your mind off worldly uh, thoughts and go out there and just have fun. You know. Well, Daniel, I gotta say this: I've been inside your pop-up camper before, and mm -hmm. when it is open, it is roomy. I mean, it is. Yes. I mean, yeah. It's like, and you, you don't realize it from the outside until you step inside. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's going to be a problem with uh, having space for 
some additional people to come in. Yeah. Uh, I've got to say that I'm, I'm really proud of the fact that you decided to hold on to that pop-up and get it fixed up and continue using it. Yeah, it was cheaper. <laughs> it, it, it definitely was. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you've got a super deal yeah. on that on that pop-up camper, and there was mm-hmm. very little wrong with it when yeah. you picked it up. Yeah, so, there wasn't anything wrong with it. It was just, it's just you know, stuff breaks down. That's just the the nature of things in general. And you, if you keep it up to date, like with maintenance and stuff, I mean, it, everything works out. I mean, the thing about camping is a lot of people, they, they hate it because, oh, well, this broke, that broke. Like, I mean, I'd even mention it, but we had a, uh, going down to uh, Myrtle Beach, we had a flat tire because we- I heard uh, you had yeah, two flat our, tires. Yeah, well, oh. kind of. Well, here's the thing. Here's another tip of the day. Um, make sure your tires aren't dry rotted. They 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 probably look fine and everything, but if you see the little cracks in there, I, I would make sure to probably get them changed because the biggest problem, and I don't know if there's anyone out there who could have told me what I could have done differently. Our biggest problem is we had a flat and we didn't know till someone came up beside us and said we had a flat. I couldn't feel it. And when I pulled over and everything, there was nothing left. It was just the rubber was gone. It you was were lucky. just it was just metal. But wow, you know we got it jacked up and we put a the spare tire on there, which has never been used. And so you know we we decided to go to a tire store and get another tire. And it's great now. It's just I don't know that was I had to, that was I not had a to good go, idea. I had to go through that a couple times with my pull along trailer, so I totally understand. But anyway, you know when we're talking about uh, camping and we're talking about campfires, uh, I, I do want to point out some campfire safety tips here before we get into our featured campground because this is so important regardless of where you're camping i don't care if it's out west i don't care if it's here on the east coast or up north it's going to be very important that you keep in mind some very simple safety tips in the back of your head first of all you never want to use gasoline or lighter fluid to start a fire get some of those fire starters they're not very expensive and they fire right up and you know you get your your fire going in no time at all never allow children to play around fire either carefully supervise all campfire activities and that includes roasting hot dogs and marshmallows and we're going to be doing that on the back patio here in just a couple weeks daniel so uh, free food i know you'll be on over here hey okay it beats making it myself What a lot of folks don't do, and this is also very important, keep a fire extinguisher or a water source handy, even if it's a big bucket of water. Keep it around you just in the event something gets out of control and you have some water there to put on that fire and and knock it out. Never allow a fire to become too intense. Constantly monitor the area for hot embers and make sure the fire is completely out before going to bed. It's time now for our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. Oh yeah. (laughs) This week we are going to the state of Kentucky to Holly Bay. Daniel, have you ever camped in Kentucky before? It's funny you say that. We're uh, our next trip for next year is going up to Mammoth Caverns, and uh, it's up in Kentucky, and so I'm pretty excited about that. I've never been to Kentucky, so next year is going to be our first year going up there. Well, this week we're going to be visiting Holly Bay. It's located two miles north of the Laurel River Dam, and it sits on the west side of the Laurel River Lake. And visitors can go there to enjoy the campground for its proximity to the water and beautifully forested location. In addition, Holly Bay is ideal for activities like power boating, canoeing, and fishing. Uh, boating and water skiing are a big hit out there. The boat ramp and fish cleaning stations are located a short distance away from the campground. Uh, the campground itself offers single and double family campsites, some of which have 20, 30, or 50 amp electrical hookups, and some campsites overlook the lake. Uh, Check out their activities and amenities. Plenty of them right there on the website. A few things to know before you go. Make sure to reserve a site that will accommodate your equipment. The site you reserve is your site, and you may not move to another site later on. 
So you've got to keep that in mind. There's a limit of two vehicles per campsite. A fee will be charged for additional vehicles. All that information is right there on our website, and we're going to have a link to it on the Happy Camper Radio website. Just click on the featured campground section, and you'll find it there. Remember, don't move firewood. Purchase all your firewood locally. This campground is open all the way through October 25th. So if you're passing through Kentucky, if you're looking for a great place to go camping, consider Holly Bay, Kentucky. It is our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. And as always, if you have a campground that you would like for us to feature on the program, get in touch with me, Skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com, and make sure you include a link to the campground website. Well, Daniel, it was great having you back over here in the studio again. Don't stay away so long this time, okay? <laughs> uh, I'll, I know, yes, sir. Yes, I, sir. I, I, know you're, I know you're busy. I know you enjoy your dancing. You enjoy your karate and all that. I do. Stuff. And my roller skating. All right. Hey, and bring the wife on by sometime. Okay. You know, I she will. Can, she can keep you in line. And when you've said enough, she has a way of shutting you up. <laughs> uh, we'll see. All right. Hey, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Hey, don't forget, you can catch us online anytime at www.happycamperradio.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker, add us to circles on Google+, and now subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. The Happy Camper Radio Show is a presentation of Skip Huber Productions. I'm Skip. I am a happy camper. And no question about it, my friends, you can be a happy camper, too. Talk to you next week. This is Happy Camper Radio.